Here is my cute little bear and breakfast. My cute little bud and breakfast. Sorry, there's a loud plane. You got some thoughts? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Peyton. It is nice to meet you, it is nice to see you. Today, we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch's latest cute cozy game, Bear and Breakfast, which actually isn't a brand new game. It's been available on the PC for a little bit, but it just came to the Nintendo Switch last week and it is available for $19.99 in the eShop. In a time where it feels like there is a new cute and cozy game every single week, I feel like it's my duty, my responsibility to play as many games as I can because I want to. But also, because there are so many games, it's hard to decide what games you actually want to play and what games you might be able to skip out on. Because unfortunately, we can't, guys, we can't just buy every single thing because it looks cute. Well, you can if you're rich, but like most of us aren't. So <laughs> today I'm going to be giving you guys kind of, it's like a first impressions of Baron Breakfast because I only played about five hours. I did play it live on stream. My first raw unedited reactions can be found there. You could go ahead and check that stream out if you're interested as well as seeing the gameplay as well. I think it's really helpful and trying to decide if you want to play a game, you should probably like look at how the game plays first, I feel like. Anyway, I'm gonna give you guys my first impressions review on Baron Breakfast, what I like about it, what I do not like about it, and overall, if I think it is worth checking out and worth spending your time and money on. But before we do that, if you haven't already, please be sure to click the lovely little like button on the video. It really helps a girl out, as well as subscribe if you haven't already. I make a lot of cozy, chaotic content just like this, as well as do a lot of streams, lots of fun stuff. We would love to have you over here in the corner. All right, I will stop talking. Let's get into it. Okay, before I get into my thoughts, let me give you just a little bit of a brief synopsis of what the game is, just so we're on the same page. So, Baron Breakfast follows Hank. That's you. You're, you're Hank? It's you. You're a cute little bear. <laughs> and you live in the woods with your mom and with your friends and you're like a teenager you're growing up you've never really been outside of the small place that you were raised so Baron Breakfast follows Hank and his friends leaving home for the first time to kind of explore what's out and about immediately they run into a suspicious robot shark man who instantly wants to strike up a business endeavor with them he pretty much is like we can take old rundown buildings turn them into bed and breakfasts that are just mediocre. We can make money. We could get the humans back to town all as well. And so Hank and his friends seeking independence and money, they decide, sign me up. So pretty much the point of the game is you're opening bed and breakfasts all over different towns and you're meeting new characters, getting new items and doing tasks along the way. That's pretty much the basic premise. So let me get into my thoughts. So the game is filled with very colorful characters, all of which who are very unique and interesting. <laughs> this is probably my favorite part of the game. From a sketchy robot shark man, to a possum who absolutely hates compliments, to a spooky alligator witch lady, there are a lot of interesting folks to meet and interact with, all of which have very, interesting dialogue. My favorite, honestly, my favorite part of the game and my favorite part when I streamed it was coming up with different voices for each of the characters. It was a lot of fun. However, I will say this game is not for children. Um, I would give this like a PG 13 plus rating because there are some like small curse words and adult humor that I think would go over a kid's head. I personally enjoyed it and found it to be really funny. However, it was a little jarring because I didn't see the game marketed that way. Um, and I am a family friendly streamer. So I was taken a little off guard when I had to skip through some of the dialogue a little fast, but I personally enjoy that aspect of it. It is just something to note, um, maybe if a child is going to be checking out this game. Other than the characters themselves and like how they act and what they say, I really like the design of the game. What I like so much about it is everything looks very cute, 
but it's not so overly cutesy, you know what I mean? It's not very rainbow and pastel. This definitely gives like that cozy, I say kind of fall time vibe where I can really imagine playing this game like snuggled up on a couch like in the fall with my apple cider. It's very that. It could also be dark and spooky at times without getting to be, you know, scary for maybe a younger audience. The actual characters themselves, I really like how they look, and they have very funny facial reactions. The reactions we were kind of like making memes out of on my stream, definitely, definitely really enjoyable and really funny. I also like that all the different places you can go and visit in the game feel really different. I like that there is kind of like a spooky woodland area you could go to, and there's more of like a desert, Cars Route 66 place. I like that it's different. I like that there are different places to go. It keeps it from feeling a little bit repetitive and I enjoy that aspect of it as well. Unfortunately, that's that's pretty much all that I enjoyed. So I'm gonna kind of get into the more negative aspects of the game, keeping in mind most of the negative aspects that I'm going to be talking about today are relating to the fact that this is on the Nintendo Switch. This video is reviewing Baron Breakfast on the Switch specifically. This game is a PC game first, and it does seem to run and behave differently on the PC. So I can only give you my opinion on what I played, which is the Switch. I always play Switch games over here for the most part. So I'm giving you the Switch review, okay? Just keep that in mind. For me, the part of the game that I did not like the most was the controls. I could not, and if you watch my stream, you'll, you'll see me struggle. I could not figure out what the heck I was doing with these controls. The game does give you a basic sense of like, okay, this is how you move and this is how you interact with things, which are fine and that's easy and intuitive. But opening your inventory, switching like modes to go into like design mode, it's, it's not very, in my opinion, it's not very user friendly and it wasn't explained very well to me. Now, I thought maybe I was just an idiot um, so I did like look up other people's reactions and opinions after my stream and I did find that a lot of people were having the same problem as me where it just felt very difficult to do many things. Specifically the biggest letdown was it was so difficult to figure out the controls to make the rooms in the bed and breakfast. I struggled so much trying to make those rooms, which was kind of a bummer because I feel like making the bed and breakfast is the big draw of the game. So I was a little disappointed. I definitely got the controls a little bit more as I went along, but it definitely seems like a game that I would have enjoyed a whole heck of a lot more if I was playing on PC and I could just click on what I wanted. If I was able to just click, I would have gotten so much further in the game than I managed to in the five hours I played, because I just was so stuck all the time on what I needed to click to do what I wanted to do. Other than that, the other main issue I have with the game is the graphics are very small. Keeping in mind, I played this with my Switch docked, and I played it on stream, so I played it on a monitor. I have a pretty big size monitor. It's like literally the one I played on is arm's length away from me, so I'm pretty close to it. And I had such difficulty reading the text. I had difficulty just seeing a lot of things. It was just, it was just a little bit too small. I like how the game looks visually. I just needed it to be a little bit bigger. There is a zoom feature in the game. However, I didn't find, again, maybe it was me struggling with the controls. I didn't find the zoom feature was always accessible and there were sometimes you couldn't use it. So I kept resorting to using the actual switches zoom feature that you can turn on and off where you like, click the home button and you could zoom in really close. I had to do that a lot to kind of be able to figure out what the heck was going on. And I know specifically just from a streaming point of view, my chat really struggled with it too, because if it was hard for me to see, I know it was hard for them to see specifically. I can't imagine if you were watching it on like a phone, it probably looks very, very small, but that is something that might be a little bit better if you're playing handheld because you know you, you're looking at it here rather than from here but just something to keep in mind specifically if you're someone that likes to play the switch you know on your computer or if you are playing on your tv and your tv is a little far i probably wouldn't recommend that for this game 
Other than the visuals and controls, I do have a couple negative other aspects about the game that I didn't particularly enjoy that much. One of the biggest things being the time and the tasks. So this is a game similar to a Stardew Valley or an Ooblets where the in-game time goes by pretty quickly. And I actually really like those games because it feels like, oh my god, there's so much to do in one day, I need to make sure I gotta get it done and I gotta think about what I wanna prioritize and do on this day. However, in Baron Breakfast, the time doesn't really seem to matter that much. Again, at least as far as I've gotten, the time is really the only reason I was aware of the time was because as soon as it gets dark, everything is really small and you couldn't see anything. So every time I was able to switch to the next day, I just was instantly switching to the next day because I just, I couldn't see. It was just too dark, too fast. Um, which was a little bit of a bummer because I like the nighttime atmosphere. It just was a little hard to navigate. Um, other than that, the only other time I've seen time really come into play is like how long people are staying at your bed and breakfast. But other than that, it doesn't really feel like the time is that important, which is okay. It's definitely supposed to be a more chill, laid back game. I think I personally just like games a little bit more like a Stardew Valley or an Ooblets where if it's gonna be on this day schedule, then it feels like there are a lot of things I could do within the day and I have to like sit and think about what I wanna do. This is definitely more, I don't know, it feels to me more like this could be a game that has a similar time to like Animal Crossing New Horizons where it could be more of a real world kind of clock. But then going into the tasks, it feels like there's not that much to do. Again, this is supposed to be a more chilled, laid back game. I totally get that. I think I was just looking for there to be more things to do. There was quite a few times where in my gameplay of it, where I was like, okay, now what? I did I did the like t the tasks over on the sidebar and then like I go to the next day and it's still like the same tasks and I'm like, oh, well, I did those. So now what do I do? And I just kind of was hungering for there to be a little bit more to do. Again, I was early on in the game, so there could be a whole heck of a lot more to do. I just didn't get there yet. The other kind of negative thought for me, and I do know some of my viewers said this too, that the game wasn't quite what they expected it to be. I kind of expected just from the name and from like the picture, Baron Breakfast, I thought it was going to be like a design heavy game where I was building these intricate bed and breakfast, having like kooky characters stay there and then doing kooky things within the bed and breakfast. But that's not really what the game is. The game is really more kind of like, I guess, story driven where you have to go to different places. The actual bed and breakfast, it's cute making it and it's really cute putting the furniture in it. But you don't get to interact with the guests that stay in the bed and breakfast at all. They don't talk to you. They can't talk to you. The only thing you get to do is just click accept when someone wants to stay at your bed and breakfast. And they sometimes have special um, preferences and you can cater to them. But even those don't really feel like the most difficult or complicated things in the whole world. Again, I'm only at the beginning, so maybe it gets harder. Also... Uh, there was a lack of breakfast. I wanted I wanted to make some waffles. I think there is cooking later on, um, but five hours in, I'm just letting you know there's no breakfast. <laughs> there's no breakfast yet. I think there is later, um, which is fine, but just not what I was expecting. I was expecting, okay, we really get to personalize this bed and breakfast, and oh my goodness, let's pick what's on the menu today, all that kind of stuff, which again, is not really what the game is. That being said, I do enjoy what the game is. It just wasn't what I was expecting. I think this game is very clever. I think it's very funny. I, like I said, the dialogue was so funny. It was cracking me up the whole time. I like the characters. I like how the game looks. I like a lot of aspects of it. You could tell that the developers really put a lot of love into this game. So I don't want this review to feel like I hate the game and I'm telling you not to get it because it's not that. I'm gonna say, you shouldn't get this game on the Switch. I think this game probably would have been a million times more enjoyable for me if I played it on the PC. Yes, there still would have been some aspects that I thought were a little bit negative, like not so much interaction in the actual bed and breakfast, and you know, like the time being a little strange, 
But, since I would have been able to get over the control and perhaps the visual size battle I was having, I think I would have gotten a lot further a lot sooner. So, in my five hours of playing, in my five hour stream of it, I feel as though I didn't get as far as I potentially could have because I kept running into barriers regarding things being too small and having to navigate. So I'm not gonna say don't get this game, I'm gonna say try this game on PC instead. I know that I heard so, so many positive reviews about this game on PC, so I really think the main issues with this game are not really the game at all. I think it's mainly the controls that really kind of do it for me. That said, the creators have said that they have heard feedback about the controls and about the size of the game and some other issues. Sometimes it like freezes up a little bit. I didn't really have that many issues with that, to be honest. Um, and I know it is something that they are continuing to develop. So I love to hear that in a game that they're going to continue to work on it and put more stuff into it. So I do definitely think it is worth checking out. However, I would recommend watching other people's streams of it just to kind of get an idea of the content, just because I think that it could be a little bit misleading what the game is actually about. Another thing I think is really difficult is there are so many cozy games coming out right now. It's hard not to compare them. It's really hard not to compare them, especially like me when I'm playing so many different games. I feel like I really want to be hooked within the first like five minutes. So I know it's something I could keep doing. This one is definitely more of a slow pick it up when you want to and take your time with it kind of thing. It's not okay, we're in, let's go, let's do a million things. It's just a different kind of game. It is something I will continue to play, um, but it probably will be something that I don't stream on the channel until I get to a point where I feel like I've made enough progress where there's enough like exciting things happening to show you guys. It feels more of like a let's relax and unwind on our own kind of game rather than a you know, thing that you continuously make like lots of episodes about. I think that's all I have to say. I did enjoy this game. I don't want you to think I didn't. Please don't yell at me in the comments because I know that this game is so popular in PC. Keep in mind, I was playing it on the Switch, so a little bit different of an experience. But regardless, at the end of the day, everyone's allowed to have their own opinions. And my favorite game might not be your favorite game. Your favorite game might not be my favorite game. And that's the cool thing about life is we all can have different opinions. But I want to know your opinion down below. Let me know. Have you played Baron Breakfast? Do you want to play it? What are your thoughts about it? I want to know what's going on with you, with, with, with you and Baron Breakfast. Let me know. Please be sure to like the video on your way out if you haven't already and subscribe. Thank you all so very much for being here. All of the love in the world. And also let me know what other cute and cozy games you want me to try and give you my thoughts on. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.